Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. I'm Rodney Rogers, uh, president of Bowling Green State University, and it's my honor to welcome you to this live event coming to you from the Stroh Center on the Bowling Green campus of Bowling Green State University. You know, 278 days ago, this is the location that we believed uh, that you would be officially celebrating your graduation from BGSU. And while we are absolutely committed to having an in-person commencement ceremony at a later date, I know that many people are disappointed that this celebration isn't taking place in person. And so, as we have done for the last 278 days, we've adapted, we've flexed it, flexed, we found a way to move forward, and we are hosting this virtual celebration, certainly recognizing all of the successes of our graduates. We've got some videos from uh, some notable alumni that want to share greetings to you and congratulations. We've got some uh, musical performances from your fellow students and, and faculty of the College of Musical Arts. We have a video of some highlights of the last four years of your time at BGSU. And we're even uh, awarding an honorary degree uh, to a uh, individual whose accomplishments uh, are, are an inspiration. With me, physically distanced, of course, is our provost and chief academic officer, Dr. Joe Whitehead, and he will be sharing some remarks shortly. But before that, let's take a look back at the last four years. While well, your time at BGSU isn't quite ending the way we expected, it's been a great four years with so many moments to remember. Since we welcomed you at Freshman Convocation, the class of 2020 and the university have soared. You were the first to enjoy the new Greek village and to learn in the Kuleen Center. We renewed our commitment to old traditions, began building a new one, and said goodbye to an old one. You tried to catch them all and found a place that you will always belong. We displayed our pride with a new campus landmark. You danced, biked, and shaved for charity. Nearly a dozen new Falcons joined the family, and new business ideas were hatched. There were MAC championships, big seasons, Big wins. NCAA appearances. A return to national prominence. And national championships. We eclipsed our peers in national rankings. And the sun followed suit. There were some long winters, but we had fun. We served to remember Dr. King's legacy. Honored Bob and Ellen Thompson, BGSU's most generous philanthropist. Celebrated a gift from Alan and Carol Schmidhorst that will transform our future. And raised a record amount of support for our next chapter. We formed new innovative partnerships to help meet workforce needs. And our research served the public good, working to address the critical issues facing the world. Our frontline Falcons became our healthcare heroes. We welcomed new friends and had to say goodbye to old ones too soon. But we stayed in touch and kept on teaching and learning, and did our part to keep our campuses safe and healthy. And most importantly, we sent the class of 2020, 1,024 new BGSU graduates and scholars soaring to serve the world and lead meaningful and productive lives.
you know those letters in uh, those BGSU letters in front of the union and, and those robots. I, I know they were a little controversial at the beginning, but they seem to have become somewhat popular. Uh, but I also know that uh, this video doesn't nearly capture all of the memories and highlights of your time at Bowling Green. And that is why, um, and, 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 and that is what really makes this university so very special. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Joe Whitehead, Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. Dr. Whitehead. Thank you, President Rogers. As Provost, it is a pleasure to be here this morning to extend my sincere congratulations to all our students graduating from Bowling Green State University. With more than 200 undergraduate majors and more than 175 graduate programs, 1,024 students are graduating in nine academic colleges today. As President Rogers mentioned, we have loved to, we would love to celebrate with you in person and we plan to do that later. However, today's virtual event is to recognize you and all your hard work and accomplishments. During their experience here at BGSU, our graduates have learned inside and outside the classroom. At the academic heart of the university is our faculty. I want to take this moment to recognize and thank them for their flexibility, adaptability, and support of our students to ensure their success during these challenging times. Graduates, your, degrees, your degree represents the pursuit to create and share new knowledge. You are pushed to think critically and creatively. You are prepared to live meaningful and productive lives. Many of you were involved on campus, studied abroad, advanced your leadership skills, participated in community service, lived in a learning community, completed an internship or co-op, or conducted research. These experiences make you who you are today. While I hope to see you at an in-person commencement in the future, we would still like to recognize these students who have excelled in academic endeavors and are graduating with academic distinction and honors. This is indeed a great accomplishment for our students and their families. Bowling Green State University congratulates you for your commitment and for your success. It is my pleasure to recognize the following groups of students. First, I'd like to congratulate 16 students who have successfully completed the requirements for doctoral degrees. I would like to also recognize the 224 students who earned master's degrees. Congratulations to graduate students on your accomplishments. We have 89 students graduating cum laude with a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.5. 39 students graduating magna cum laude with a cumulative grade point average of at least 3.7, and 40 students graduating summa cum laude with a cumulative grade point average of 3.9. In addition, we are proud to recognize 16 graduates who have completed their entire academic experience with a perfect 4.0 grade point average. That is a perfect 4.0 grade point average. These students would graduate with distinction of the President's Award and, are, and receive a special medallion for this honor. Congratulations. I'm also pleased to recognize the outstanding achievement of our students who have been honored through Phi Beta Kappa, Phi Kappa Phi, and who are in an honors college. Phi Beta Kappa and Phi Kappa Phi are each one of the world's leading honor societies. Only 10% of the higher education institutions in the world have both chapters, and Bowling Green State University is proud to be one of those 10%. Honors students have completed designated coursework and an honors project, which includes independent research. These students must maintain a 3.5 grade point average. In short, all of today's 1,024 graduates are part of BGSU. We are so proud of you and your and congratulations. Thank you, Provost Whitehead. 
At yesterday's Board of Trustees meeting, the trustees unanimously voted to grant Joanne Davidson, the first female speaker of the Ohio House of Representatives, an honorary doctorate of public service. Betty Montgomery, chair of our Board of Trustees, along with the provost and I, traveled to share this special moment with Dr. Davidson. In addition, officially, it is the Board of Trustees that bestows your degree, and thus it is appropriate to have our chair of the board send her greetings and a message of congratulations. You'll also hear from Ohio Department of Higher Education Chancellor Randy Gardner, who is also a BGSU alumnus. In addition to awarding degrees to our graduates this December, we have the honor and privilege of granting the 295th honorary degree in our 110 year history. Colleges and universities have been awarding honorary degrees for generations. These degrees are symbols of recognition and acknowledgement of significant accomplishments. It is the highest honor that an institution may bestow. Today, we continue this highly honored academic tradition, following approval by a unanimous vote from the Board of Trustees of Bowling Green State University, we confer upon Joanne Davidson the honorary degree of Doctor of Public Service. I now invite Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Student Affairs, Dr. Joe Whitehead, to the podium to introduce Speaker Davidson. Thank you, President Rogers. Public servant, national leader, staunch advocate. Today's honorary degree recipient, Joanne Davidson, is the first woman speaker of the Ohio House of Representatives, and she has experienced a distinguished career in Ohio State Legislature. As a public university for the public good, we recognize that she is an extraordinary example of someone who has dedicated their life to creating public good. A public servant, and government leader. Speaker Davidson worked on the Reynoldsburg City Council, represented her distinct district in the Ohio House of Representatives, and served as co-chair of the Republican National Committee. It does not stop there, as she continues to be an effective trailblazer and advocate for women in politics and public policy. In addition to her work in government, Speaker Davidson also educates the next generation of public servants in the Joanne Davidson Leadership Institute. Her story is one of hard work and grit, especially in a time that was not welcoming to women in politics and government. Known for go going door to door to engage constituents to constantly reacting across the political aisle to find the common ground in the best interest of Ohioans. Speaker Davidson embodies the best of public service. BGSU is definitely not the first to recognize her for these significant accomplishments. And her service in Ohio also go goes beyond the halls of State House. She's a trustee, trustee emerita of Franklin University and the University of Finley, as well as a former trustee of the Ohio State University. She also holds honorary degrees from Capital University, the University of Finley, Franklin University, Ohio University, and The Ohio State University. With the support of our faculty, Speaker Davidson, whose career has impacted Ohio and beyond, is deserving of this honorary doctorate of public service. Public servant, national leader, staunch advocate, and now a Falcon, speak, now a Falcon. Speaker Davidson, please join President Rogers and me at the podium for your degree presentation and hooding. Graduates, I am pleased to present Dr. Joanne Davidson, recipient of an honorary doctorate of public service.
Congratulations. Work. Thank you. Thank you so much. The president of Bowling Green State University, Dr. Rodney Rogers, provost Dr. Whitehead, chair of the Bowling Green University Board of Trustees, Betty Montgomery, staff and students. I can't tell you how honored I am to receive this recognition today for, for many reasons. Yes, I do have some other honorary degrees, but this one is sort of close to my heart because it's close to where I'm from. My hometown is Finley, which is just down the road. And so I've been very much aware of the activities of Bowling Green through the years. I think the one thing that actually sticks in my mind is going back to when I was actually attending school in Finley. There was really no place to go if you were a student and you were trying to figure out what subject you could excel in and how you could do that. But Bowling Green sponsored a very wonderful activity once a year in which students across Ohio could sign up that they wanted to take a scholarship test in algebra or you know, something that really interested them. And when you think about it, you think, well, so what good is that for them? Well, what it does do, it helps you to understand that maybe, maybe you're not as good as you think you are in a particular subject. But if you're excelling in that subject, it gives the student the ability to make a decision when they go on to college about where, where, to, where to go, what kind of a university would service them best, and how they can do that. And for me, it's something that they just dedicated to the communities around them. And it hasn't been replaced, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful idea. I did have an opportunity to serve on the Board of Trustees for the University of Finlay uh, for a number of years. So I have, I think, a pretty good feeling of what uh, our president is going through and, um, and trying to deal with circumstances I don't think that higher education has ever had to face before. So I wanted to talk a little bit about um, some of the things that I did when I was Speaker of the House, because I think they're relevant to the student body. After spending 20 years in the Ohio House, I was forced to retire under Ohio's term limits. I formed a small business and continued to do some work on legislative issues, and actually still do that today. During the intervening years, I founded a leadership institute with the support and help of Betty Montgomery for women who had shown their interest in public service. Over 400 Ohio women have graduated from this institute. The reason I mention this is because I believe we need to encourage women to be involved in public service, and many of the women that have gone through the program are also gone, are graduates of Bowling Green State University. One of the most interesting discussions I was able to participate in when I was actually doing the work of the Institute was between Bruce Johnson, who was president of Ohio's Board of University Presidents, and a gentleman who was then chairman of the Association of School Superintendents in Ohio. They both cared deeply about their opinions, and it was right at the time that this was being debated around the country, whether or not it is better to have um, a diploma from one of the state universities or to have a diploma from one of the great high schools here. And I was afraid I was going to have to get some help in because when I tell you that they were really, both of them, very dedicated to being sure that the student got the right education but had different opinions on how they could do that. So my guess is that's been some time ago and my guess is they probably still disagree. One of the major concerns that we are going through right now with the problem with the virus is that, first of all, we need to concentrate on the care of those who are ill. But secondly, we need to not forget the children because they are losing out on some of their opportunities to have the kind of education that they deserve. And as we start to prepare for the winter months and the state struggles to deal with Ohio's economy, we must also resolve our students are educated adequately so that when they finish up that they will have an opportunity that every other student in Ohio has had. I speak to that issue as when I graduated from Finley High School in 1945. 
the year the Second World War ended. I did not think I could afford to go to Finley College. I had lost my father when I was 11, and two of my brothers were in the services, so family considerations come first. That's true now for a lot of students, that family considerations must come first. And looking back, much of what I learned was a result of working for a period of time for both the Finley and the Ohio Chambers of Commerce. You can learn that way. It is not as easy and perhaps not as complete as it is in getting your degree from college, but I can tell you that it does work. I assume that you could have the same discussion today with the pandemic that you that we need to do everything possible to ensure that today's students have an opportunity to choose for themselves which route they take to, and be prepared to do so. You are so fortunate to be involved with Bowling Green State University. Dr. Rogers works around the clock to make it possible under these tough circumstances to get a good education, even though there may be lots of bumps on the road. Betty Montgomery gives a great deal of her time working with Dr. Rogers and Dr. Whitehead and using all this best information possible for the students to stay on campus. I am most appreciative of the honor and want to thank everybody responsible for supporting that. It means a great deal to me, particularly when we have other things that have to come to the top in our universities, that we, a university still indicates that they want to recognize when people care about what's important to them. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Davidson, for sharing such a powerful message. Our graduates are very fortunate to hear from a selfless public servant and leader such as yourself. You know, Speaker Davidson's legacy is not defined in legislation or her work on the local, state, and national levels, but who she is as a person and her commitment to creating public good to drive the vitality of Ohio. As Provost Whitehead mentioned, Speaker Davidson is a remarkable public servant, national leader, and an advocate. And now, she is also a Falcon. Congratulations, Dr. Davidson. Her connection to BGSU is, is something special. And with us today is another trailblazer and Ohioan who is also a true public servant. It is now my pleasure to introduce Betty Montgomery, Chair of our Board of Trustees. And also, I want to mention that Chair Montgomery was the first woman Attorney General in the state of Ohio. Chair Montgomery is a former county prosecutor, state senator, and state auditor. Most importantly, is she is a 1970 alumna of Bowling Green State University. And she will provide some closing remarks. Again, Congratulations, Dr. Davidson. Thank you very much, Dr. Rogers. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Rogers, Dr. Whitehead, Dr. Davidson. It is such an honor to be here today. I couldn't, I wouldn't want to replace it for a moment because I have a chance not only to talk to graduating students and uh, their families, but also to witness an honor to a very dear friend, Dr. Joanne Davidson. You know, she's both a friend and a mentor and an icon to literally generations of Ohioans and beyond. She led, for, led the way for decades with toughness and grace, uh, showing against all odds what women can do. She, is a, she has demonstrated a life well lived. I have a secret, however. She may be gracious. She may be quietly gracious. But in her office is a sign that says, well-behaved women seldom make history. And I can assure you personally that I know that she hasn't always been well-behaved. That said, to the graduating class of 2020, what a year you chose to graduate. And you made it. Masks, social distancing, and all. Congratulations. This year has taught you patience and perseverance. 
This year has made you appreciate the power of a hug, the power of an unmasked smile, and the gathering of friends and family. This year has also reminded you that you must live every day because you cannot take tomorrow for granted or even if you will have tomorrow. So you've learned the value of flexibility and creativity and overcoming obstacles. We are very proud of you. And as a public university for the public good, we look forward to the good your time on Earth demonstrates and will bring to your family, to your friends, and to your community. Congratulations to all of you, and God bless you. First, let me express my appreciation to President Rodney Rogers, one of the best college leaders in the Midwest, for inviting me today to be a part of this celebration. 2020 has been really hard, but I think this year perhaps we can say it best when we say this isn't the year we received everything we wanted, but perhaps we appreciate more what we have. What you have today is a BGSU education, something of real value, a Bowling Green State University diploma. You have persevered. Congratulations. I also want to congratulate my good friend, Speaker Joanne Davidson. You may not know Speaker Davidson, but she had one of the most impactful uh, legislative careers in Ohio history. Today, she receives the Honorary Doctor of Public Service degree. Very deserving. Uh, I was really honored to serve as Majority Floor Leader and Speaker Pro Tem under Speaker Davidson in the House of Representatives in the 1990s. Congratulations again, Speaker Davidson. Students, I'm very proud of my BGSU heritage. I know you are too. Congratulations again, and go Falcons. In 1942, our nation had been through the Great Depression and the world was at war in World War II. It was also a time of great uncertainty and personal sacrifices, much like what we are experiencing this past year. So at that time, the conductor of the Cincinnati Symphony Orchestra ask American composer Aaron Copeland to compose a, a fanfare to honor all of those who were making sacrifices to find a way forward. Mr. Copeland composed this piece to honor all of the men and women of the United States. And so it seemed appropriate to ask our students and faculty of the College of Musical Arts to perform this piece. Aaron Copeland's Fanfare for the Common Man.
We want you to know that Bowling Green State University will always be one of your homes and that you will be forever welcomed as a part of the Falcon family. You know, more than ever, I ask that you stay engaged and support one another. Stay engaged with your alma mater, a university that you have enriched, a university that is far better because you chose to be here. At commencement, I'm often reminded of a quote from Bowling Green's fourth president, Dr. Ralph McDonald. Uh, this quote is inscribed in the stonework of the Bowen Thompson Student Union. And the quote reads, we are linked to this institution by invisible bonds that do not wither or dissolve. We are linked to this institution by invisible bonds that do not wither or dissolve. You see, your success is our success, and our success is your success. We are forever linked by this invisible bond. Now, to be clear, not one of us has gotten to where we are without the support of others. And for our graduates, a lot of people have helped you get through Bowling Green and have helped prepare you for this next step this next journey. And so in the spirit of our 1987 commencement speaker, Mr. Fred Rogers, yes, Mr. Rogers was the 1987 commencement speaker. I am going to ask, like he did, to take 10 seconds right now to think about the people who have helped you become who you are. Those people who, who supported you were in your corner. 10 seconds. I'll watch the time. The people you thought about have made a difference in your life. And I'm sure some of them may be with you right now. So I hope you take that moment to verbally thank them as well. We've also asked a few special alumni to share some words of advice as you leave BGSU. Let's see what they have to say. Greetings, Bowling Green class of 2020. I'm Shantanu Narayan, the chairman and CEO of Adobe. And I'm proud to say that my wife, Rennie, and I are both Bowling Green State University alums. I can recall my graduation from BG. Not only was I leaving with a master's in computer science, but also with values of intellectual curiosity and a drive for excellence that BG had instilled in me. While this may not be the graduation that you had imagined it to be, it's a valuable lesson. Life can throw you curveballs. You are embarking on the next phase at a time of unprecedented uncertainty, but your education, persistence, and grit will pay off in the long run. After graduating, I moved to Silicon Valley, where I soon started a company called Pictra, because I saw the opportunities for the internet to be this incredible medium to share images and memories. While the company was not successful, it fueled my love for imaging, for photography, and for creativity, and led me to Adobe, where I eventually ran all product development. After I took over as CEO, we also had to face a recession in 2008. It was a tough time to graduate then as it is now, as well as for business leaders. But we used that as an opportunity to completely transform our company and move it to the cloud, which has led to an era of unprecedented growth. My message to you is to stay adaptable and to use every experience and adversity as a learning opportunity. There is no doubt that Bowling Green State University and the community has prepared you well for your path ahead. Congratulations again, class of 2020, and I wish you every success and fulfillment. 
Happy graduation, Falcons. I was a graduate of Bowling Green in 1986. I was the first person in my family to go to college. And I still say of all the things I've done in my life and in my career, that that act of getting higher education saved my life. When I was in your shoes, I was kind of a nervous uh, observer of the world. I, in my work and in my life, I always had a heart for the little guy. And I want to just say if I had one piece of advice to give to you today, especially in the middle of this chaotic pandemic, it would be to stay true to who you are right now. Because when you're true to your authentic self, that's what really allows you to be your best person and to do your best work. So happy graduation. Uh, bravo to you Falcons. And I hope you have a wonderful life and career. Hi, this is Jim Pickens Jr. here, class of 1976. Uh, I'm sheltering in place here in Los Angeles, California, but I want to extend congratulations to the graduating class of 2020. Obviously, the world's going to look a little different once you graduate, but you could either face it with trepidation or look at it as an opportunity to go back into your communities and be change agents. Congratulations, good luck, and we can't wait to see what you have in store for us. Bye-bye. Hello, my name is Jeff Shore, and I graduated from Bowling Green 45 years ago this spring. Now you're probably asking yourself, what does this old man who was probably on campus before electricity was invented, what does he have in common with the class of 2020? Well, there's three things. The first is, I did not get to walk at my graduation. Now, the reason wasn't a global pandemic. It was because I didn't have enough credits, but the effect was the same. My parents were pissed and I had to go stay at their home until the next quarter started. And I don't know if you've spent any time with your parents lately, but it can get pretty awkward. The second thing we have in common is that someday someone is going to come up to you and say, how is it that you're so successful? And you're gonna say it's because of the lessons that I learned inside the classroom and outside the classroom at the finest educational institution in the great state of Ohio, Bowling Green State University. And the last thing we have in common, well, we both have class pictures. Don't judge, it was 1975. Thank you for the time. God bless, good luck, and we'll get through this thing together. Flexibility, opportunity, the challenge to be change agents. Today's messages didn't just come from one commencement speaker, but several alumni who have been in your shoes, received a BSU edu BGSU education and have gone on to do amazing things. Their messages in the midst of the COVID-19 global pandemic resonates even more today. You and this next generation are going to solve some of the world's greatest problems and have such a positive impact on our communities. I hope you had a meaningful academic experience at BGSU, and I cannot wait to see what you accomplish next. While our ac academic deans could not join us today, they have recorded special messages. In addition, we will also make available the announcing of our graduates' names by college and the official program following this event. Again, congratulations. President Rogers, the podium is yours. Thank you, Provost Whitehead. Graduates, you are entering a world during uncertain times. Times such as these remind us of the importance of supporting each other, listening, and learning from others. But I also remind you that in uncertain times, there are also opportunities for those who look for those opportunities. And now more than ever, we need people who want to find those opportunities and make a difference in their communities. To be clear, to be clear you are prepared to do amazing things in the next phase of your journey. Perhaps 
more so than, than many of our past graduates. You see, you have learned to, to adapt. Uh, you've persevered. You've overcome all types of obstacles to earn this degree. You have been tested and you are absolutely prepared to make a difference in the world. A person once wrote that, quote, our actions may be impeded, but there can be no impeding our intentions because we can accommodate and adapt. The mind adapts and converts to its own purposes the obstacles to our acting. This was written by Marcus Aurelius in 170 AD and it is still true to this day. The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. You have taken action and have found the way forward. It is a valuable skill for your future. And so in closing, please remember that I look forward and the provost looks forward and the faculty and staff look forward to seeing you at an in-person event at a future commencement exercises. But also, please remember that earning your degree today places you in a very select group of people. You see, less than 7% of the world's population has a bachelor's degree or higher. And our masters and doctoral graduates are in even a more select group. You have absolutely earned your degree. But with this degree comes immense responsibility. You see, not only have you invested in your education, not only has your family invested in your education, but the citizens and the taxpayers of the state of Ohio and the United States have invested in your education. You should be proud to be a graduate of a public university that is absolutely focused on creating public good. And so I encourage you to create public good by making a difference, making a difference in your career, in your family, in your alma mater, in your community, in the nation, and in the world. Tackle messy challenges. You've done that, you've learned to do that. Work with and learn from diverse peers, empower, support others, and always be kind. Unleash your creativity, take calculated risks, and have fun. Absolutely have fun, but never, never, ever stop learning. Because if you do those things, you will absolutely do well, but you will also do good. You are entering a new chapter in your life. And this chapter, while filled with uncertainty, is yours to write. Each of us mo must own the legacy to which we belong. Happy holidays, congratulations, and ai ziggy zumba. Have you ever felt like nobody was there? Have you ever felt forgotten in the middle of nowhere? Have you ever felt like you could disappear? Like you could fall and no one would hear? So let the lonely feeling wash away Cause maybe there's a reason to believe you'll be okay Cause when you don't feel strong enough to stand You can reach, reach out your hand And hold